Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's all stand this evening. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We've already felt the presence of the Lord that is visited. Good to see each and every one of you here today. We welcome all of our guests. We are honored that you have chosen to be with us today. Why don't you step across the aisle and speak to five people real quick here? Wait, give me a little, let me give you a little bit of instruction. Try to find somebody you don't know. Introduce yourself. Tell them it's so good to have them at Life at Tupelo today. Amen, amen. So good to be here today. Now, why don't we turn our attention to the Lord? Why don't we lift our hands all over this house? Come on, let's invite Him into this place. Come on, lift your voice as we begin this service today. Go ahead and bring your mind together. Let's go ahead and invite Him into your heart, into your life today. Come on, we're going to worship Him today. I am thankful that we are in revival in life at Tupelo. We're not waiting for it, but we're in revival, and revival is continuing. And I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing. Joel chapter 2 said, And afterward the Lord said, I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Let me tell you, life in Tupelo, you know who's going to benefit from us having revival? Our children, our sons and our daughters are coming to the Lord. Amen. We are in revival, and God is going to pour His spirit out. Your old men will dream dreams. There's no time to retire. Amen. I'm glad we got a bunch of active elders here at Life at Tupelo. Amen. And we'll prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Amen. And see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Life at Tupelo, we are in the days of revival. Why don't we lift our hands and join this team in worship today. much to offer holy one I'm humbled by all that you've done yeah, yeah. and even though I walk through the valley yes, I don't have to fear no I never have to fear yes. for you have called me from my sorrow to gladness and I have what more could I want to raise my faith a little higher set my
Do you believe that? Oh yes, God. We're gonna see you move in this room. We're all gathered in one accord through your spirit and by your word. We're all united in Jesus' name. We are your dwelling place. So have your way. Oh, oh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see a revival. Yes. We're gonna see a revival in our days. Your Holy Spirit poured out, and it's falling on sons and daughters. We're gonna see.
you believe that? Your Holy Spirit, hold up. Come on, look at your sons and daughters Holy right now. That's where it's going. Yes. We're going to see revival. Oh, in this place. 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 In this Lord, I'm going to see it in my family. I'm going to see it throughout Northeast Mississippi. Oh, come on, lift your faith in this sanctuary. Put your expectations high. Your lost loved ones are going to get re refilled with the Holy Ghost. They're going to be baptized in the name of Jesus. That's the revival we're going to see in Northeast Mississippi. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 20, the prophet came to the people of God. He prayed one prayer to the Lord. He said, Lord, open their eyes that they can see the opportunity that they're in. And immediately the Lord opened the eyes of the king of Israel and all the people, and they found exactly where they were for the opportunity at hand. And that's our prayer here today, that the Lord would immediately open your eyes to your local businesses. That the Lord would open your eyes to your family members that just need a touch and a prayer from God. Come on, somebody. God's ready to do a revival. Can we just come in agreement here today? Lord, we're in revival. We're going to see a mighty outpouring of your spirit in Northeast Mississippi. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, won't you high five six or seven people in your proximity? Make them welcome to life at Tupelo. Our ushers are coming at this time to receive our tithes and our offering. Amen. We are so honored that you've joined us here at Life at Tupelo. And if you're watching us online, go ahead and check in and share our service with your friends and family on your social media feed. Amen. Would you go ahead and march your offering as the ushers come in? It's a longer walk for our ushers, so they're coming right now. We'll get some electric scooters for them in the future. Amen. Amen. We are so honored that you're here. Amen. We're seeing God pour out His Spirit upon our services, and God already has in store the miracle for each and every one of us. Won't you march your offering to the front? Just a few announcements while you're making your way to bring your offering. There's five ways to give here at Life at Tupelo. Of course, during our worship service, you can go to lifeattupelo.com. You can text the word GIVE to 1-888-531-5087. You can go to the Faith Teams app, or you can mail your offering in at our P.O. Box here in Tupelo. And as you hear the thunder roll, our response is, yes, Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements before we transition into our miracle opportunity. Tomorrow night at 6 p.m. will be our corporate prayer here in the main foyer. Tuesday night will be Mosaic Night, our first Mosaic Night in this wonderful auditorium. And we'll be blessed at 6.30 pre-service prayer, 7 p.m. service. Everyone say next Sunday. Next Sunday's Friends Day, we want you to invite your friends and family to be with us as Reverend Wayne Huntley will be ministering in word. Out in the foyer of our uh, main entrance are guest cards. You can invite guests with these pickup cards. Our ushers and our hospitality team will have them at the conclusion of today's service. And we want you to pick up some invite cards on the back. You can write your name and your number for them to contact you to be a part of what God's doing here at Life at Tupelo. August 14th, we're going to have a wedding and baby shower walkthrough for Tyler and Alexis Riley. They are here today. Throw your hands up so everybody can see you. They're in the back. You get to have Tyler and Alexis Riley. We are so honored that they're a part of our life at Tupelo family. We want to bless them on August 14th. Everyone say two Sundays from now. 
Two Sundays from now, we're going to have a walkthrough of wedding and baby shower for them in the foyer. Also on August 14th will be our backpack blessing from our Kids Life Ministry. We want you and your children to bring your backpack on that Sunday service. And our kids ministry will be praying and anointing those backpacks for the upcoming school year. Amen. We got a champion in the house today. The Lord is letting his presence known that he's the champion. But we want Cray Fisher to come at this time. We want his coaches, Justin and Carrie Fisher, to come. Justin was a coach in the tournament, but we know there's a big coach at the house with Sister Carrie. And we love and appreciate Cray. Look at all this merchandise here. Come on, let's give him a hand. If you did not know, this is... Cray won the 2022 National Bible Quiz Championship in North America for the beginner division. This season, let's go over these accolades here. As you can see, the medals are all, are, is your neck okay, son? Is your neck okay? Can somebody get him a neck brace to support this hardware? We have five state tournament wins. We have the Disney Invitational win. That was in Orlando, Florida. The Chase Marshall Tournament win in Indianapolis, Indiana. The Extravaganza in Gainesville, Florida. Of course, the National Bible Quiz Tournament in Branson, Missouri. We have nine tournaments that him and his cousin Aiden were in. They had 42 matches this season, and they won 41 matches. That's got to be a world record right there. We are so proud of this family. Coach Justin, he also was the... Uh, uh, runner-up quizzer of the year in the nation we want you to get behind our Bible quizzing we're going to develop that here at life at Tupelo and we're so thankful that they partnered with Apostolic Life UPCI Cedar Grove and him and his cousin they did phenomenal can we give them one more hand as we honor them their family Justin coach and sister Carrie brother Dale's coming at this time for one more announcement God bless you Well, next week we are starting our classes throughout the campus on uh, Sunday school, starting at 3 o'clock. And so with that, we are starting our Connect Point class, and it is going to be certainly a 2.0. And we are inviting all of you that are here today, if you are new or you're just thinking about making life at Tupelo your home, we want to invite you to come and be a part of those classes. It's a four-week journey that we will meet at 3 o'clock every Sunday afternoon before the service. And if you'll go through those double doors and make your way upstairs, we'll help get you there. But there is a form as you leave today, Connect Point Sign Up. I encourage you to sign up for that if you would as you leave today. Put your name and your number down there and I'll be connect, uh, connecting with you, calling this week and making sure that we are connected. We're excited about this journey. Amen. The Lord said in John chapter 10 that Jesus said, I am come that you might have a life and that you might have it more abundantly. That abundant life is really when you get connected to a local church and you find forgiveness and healing and you discover your purpose and your place in the kingdom of God. There's no greater joy than that. And so we encourage you to be a part of our Connect Point class. It is your right next step. If you are here and you have already made this your home or if you are considering, if you have been through Connect Point class over the past couple of years, let me hear an amen. amen. Amen, folks all over the house. And so we encourage you to come and be a part of that. Amen. Let's stand. We're getting ready to go to the Lord at this time in our service. The scripture challenges us and says, Are there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and pray over them. Anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And if you have committed any sin, here's the second part of that that we leave off many times. If you've committed any sins, it will be forgiven you. Amen. So it doesn't matter what your problem is today. If it's sickness or it's sin, this altar is the place you need to be today. And you can have deliverance before you leave here. If you're here today and you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't have to wait any longer. As we make our way down, you make your way to this front. Whatever your need is, make your way to this front ministry team if you'll go ahead and make your way down we certainly have many needs that we want to mention 
Amen. And we're going to, as we begin to pray, I want you to make your way down to this front as we begin to pray. But let's remember Steve and Jenny LaCroix. They need a touch of God in their body. Let's remember Dan Franklin. Let's remember Tiffany Ashcraft today, Steve Groman. Let's remember De Sister Dolores Coleman. Let's remember Sister, Sister S Cindy Starn's mother. Let's remember Sister Kelsey Allen. Amen. That God, she's got more reports and tests to be run this week. We're going to pray that God would continue to walk this journey with her. Let's remember Sister Jean Carney. We're praying God will continue to walk this journey with her. Amen. We're going to pray over Brother Ethan Taylor. Brother Ethan, come on down. Put that camera down for a minute. It's his last service today with us for a while. He's going to be going off to college, and we love this young man. We're going to pray over him in Jesus' name today. Amen. Go ahead and make your way down to the front. Saints of God, from the front to the back, go ahead. Lift your hands. Lift your voices. Let's pray over these needs here today. Not only the needs listed, but there are needs in the service today. Would you pray faith right now? Would you pray that God would have his way right now? Lord, we love you, Jesus. God, we honor you today, and we are so thankful and honored, God, to be in your house. We are so thankful, Lord, for the privilege to make our needs known before you, God. These are our petitions, what we have needs of, God. There are needs all in this house. We ask, God, that you would provide. We ask, God, that you would lift up those who are discouraged. We pray against sickness today. God, we pray against, Lord, those, Lord, that are down and discouraged today. I pray for those who need the Holy Ghost, that in this house today they would receive the wonderful baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for those who are being baptized in Jesus' name by water immersion today. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus, wonderful. Knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence, you never felt me yet. Oh, you never felt me yet. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know the night won't last. Your word will come. 
you believe he's the same God? The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you believe that, clap your hands. He's still the healer. He's still the deliverer. He's still the savior. Whatever you have need of today, all you gotta do is say yes to Jesus Christ and he'll make a way where there seemeth to be no way. If you believe that, clap your hands to the Lord. His word says, in the last days saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We're gonna see the greatest revival we have ever seen. Of his spirit being poured out, not only here in life in Tupelo, but every church in Northeast Mississippi, let your spirit be poured out. Let it happen. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. our praise and worship team for leading us in worship today. Man, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to life at Tupelo. Amen. I'm so thankful to be in the house of the Lord. You may be seated. We welcome you to life at Tupelo today. We thank you so much for joining us on our third Sunday at 1379 North Coley Road. And as it rains on the outside, I believe God's Spirit's going to rain on the inside. Amen, amen, amen. I'll certainly try to preach over the rain, but we hope you're enjoying yourself today. And if you're visiting with us, we say welcome to life at Tupelo where everyone is welcome going to preach about that today, but so good to have all of our guests today, a lot of first-time guests, so good to see David Mash, this is Sister Sherry Felt's son, his first time to be here, and we're baptizing him in Jesus' name after service today, amen. So good to see Miss Joan Bennett, we're honored that you're here, so good to have Tiffany with Aiden today, met her before service, good to see Catherine McCoy, so good to see Momo Becky and Emma with us today, honored that you guys are here. So good to see Emerson and McKinley Johnson, honored you guys are here. So good to see Dalen Tudor and Shirley Tedford and Harriet Goja. Also David Pennington is here, brother of Brother Eddie Pennington. We baptized Brother Eddie at the end of service last Sunday. We thank the Lord for that in Jesus' name. So good to see all the Pennington family and Sister Shirley Mills, honored you're here. And I just met Hunter Harrison a while ago. We're honored that you are here. And uh, as has already been mentioned, this coming Tuesday will be our first Tuesday mosaic at 7 p.m. We'll all be gathered here in the sanctuary. We hope you will join us. It's gonna be a great night of worshiping together. And then this coming Sunday, we will begin classes at 3 p.m. Everybody say 3 p.m. We have classes for every age group, and it's going to be a great time of fellowship, a great time of studying the Word together, and then we will break at 345, come into the main worship center here for prayer, and then worship at 4 p.m. That will begin next Sunday, and also next Sunday, we will begin 21 days of prayer and fasting. Everybody say prayer and fast. We will have resources to you by next Sunday. It's a time basically for us to humble ourselves and, and seek God and his kingdom. And we believe when school starts back in the first of the year are two great times to do that. And I believe that we will hear from heaven. I believe that God is going to answer some prayers. And I believe God's spirit is going to be poured out as we pray and fast together. There's calendars that are in the foyer when you leave today. You can stay updated with that and also on our website, which is lifeattupelo.com. And uh, next Sunday, we will welcome one of my dear friends, one of my mentors and one of our bishop's dear friends, Brother Wayne Huntley, will be with us next Sunday for Friends Day. Everybody say Friends Day. We want to pack this place out. We have invite cards that you can get at the welcome desk as you leave. and. 
we want to just love on our friends and let them know we appreciate them. It will be a great time of worship and a great time of the word. And you do not want to miss. It's going to be an incredible day. And uh, so I encourage you to invite your friends. And uh, I believe God's spirit is going to be poured out. Can everyone say amen? Are you ready for the preaching of the word? Could we stand together right now? If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms chapter 69 and verse 5. Psalm 69 and 5. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Oh God, you know how foolish I am. My sins cannot be hidden from you. We're a church that believes everyone is wealthy. There's not one of us that are perfect, so I'm preaching to all of us in this building today and those that are watching online. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your presence that we feel, and today I pray that we would leave challenged, we would leave changed, and your spirit would minister to each and every heart. God, I pray, Lord, today that we would do what you're asking your word tells us to do, God. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, and can everyone say amen? If you're going to help me preach, you can be seated. I'm watching. Some of y'all slow sitting down. There is nothing more freeing than to know forgiveness. There is nothing more freeing than to no longer need to hide from God because of fear and because of guilt. Some people wear masks around the end of October. Three months from now, people will be wearing masks around this community, but many people wear masks in the real world every day to try and hide their hurt, to try and hide their pain, and try to hide their feelings of, of worthlessness or their feelings of depression or their feelings of anxiety. They wear masks to try to hide their emptiness. Now that I am older, there are times where, if I'm honest with you, that I, even as a pastor, still wear a mask. It seems easier to hide behind an invisible mask where, when people are around. A mask designed to fool others into assuming that my day is going well. A mask to hide behind the fact that I am not really in control of my life. A mask I put on to hide frustration. Have you ever been frustrated? A mask to hide behind your, your anger. Have you ever been angry? A mask to hide behind maybe some guilt or some shame. Do you ever put on a mask like I just described to you? And so today I am preaching, take off a mask. Take off your mask. There are really only two reasons that people wear masks. Number one is to change your identity. At church, you look like a Christian, you act like a Christian, you even smell like a Christian. But around non-Christians, you can just blend in just fine. And so you wear a mask many times to, to fit in. And, and like a chameleon, you secure your mask in place because you want to blend in to your surroundings. The second reason that many of us wear a mask is this, is that it's to hide your identity because you do not want people to see the real you. Truly. None of the masks I wear are remotely close to who God has created me to be. And so today we are going to meet two people who wore masks to become something that they were not. If you have your Bibles, the crux of today's message is from Acts chapter 5. I'll be reading verse 1 through verse 11. It says, Now a man named Ananias, he should have been mad at his mother for giving him that name, a man named Ananias together with his wife Sapphira, God bless her too, also sold a piece of property and with his wife's full knowledge he kept back part of the money for himself but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Verse 3, then Peter brought the rest. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied 
to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold and after it was sold? Was it the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to men, but you have lied to God. And when Ananias heard this, he fell down, and the Bible says he died. There's a great fear, as you can imagine. Something happened to one of y'all in this place, and that happened. Great fear sees all who heard what had happened. And then the young men came forward. They wrapped up his body, and they carried him out, and they buried him. Verse 7, not sure why he and his wife didn't come to church together. But after three hours later, his wife came in not knowing what had happened, and Peter asked her, tell me, this, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? And she said, yes, that is the price. And Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. In this passage of scripture, Ananias and his wife Sapphira were wearing masks. They wanted everyone to see what they wanted them to see. And the problem was that the Lord and Peter saw through their mask. I ask you this question today, are you here this afternoon wearing a mask? It's a big question to ask. But today let me give you some facts about yourself that might make you remove the mask a little easier. But came to preach to you, remove the mask. Fact number one today is you are not perfect. I hate to tell you this, but you will never, ever be perfect. Sin is ugly. Sin is embarrassing. Sin is a blemish that we don't want to face, and we don't want anyone else to see it. So what do we do? We hide. But every one of us in here, we are sinners. Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's me and that's you and that's every person watching online. Oh, Someone just would have shared this thought with Ananias and his wife Sapphira. Their story would have had a much different ending. Ananias and Sapphira were not perfect, but they overcompensated on this particular day. They did something so generous that they were hoping to get recognition and praise. And so hey, they had this scam that would still leave them some money, but also make them appear holy in the eyes of everyone at the church. Let me tell you today, sin is ugly, and because it is so ugly, many of us try to hide it, but we need to know that we are not perfect people, and we will never be perfect people. Can somebody say amen? I think we know this in our head, but we do not know it in our heart because Christians all across America still have this strange idea that when we walk through the doors of a church on a Sunday, we feel we better have it all together. There's nobody that has it all together. We feel like your hair has to be nice and neat and clean and gelled. Your clothes have to be presentable. Your kids better not make a peep. And for goodness sake, you better not come forward at invitation time because then people just might know that you are not perfect. But let me tell you this, this is a place for every one of us. These altars, this is a place for every one of us to come and say yes to Jesus Christ. No, I'm not perfect, but God, I need you. No, I don't have it all together, but God, I need this altar. Can somebody say amen? We can act fake with God. We talk our way out of the spiritual life by refusing to come to God as we are. And instead, we decide to wait until we have it all together to come to God. Let me let you in on a little secret. I hate to tell you this, but you will never, ever have it all together. 
Not one of us in this place will ever have it all together. We've had been brainwashed in our mind that we have to get good to get God. Listen, that is not true. You have to have God to get good. You've got to have God to become the man that he's called you to become. You've got to have God to become the lady that he's called you to become. We need Jesus because we are not perfect. Can somebody say amen? Many decide that the way that we lived yesterday and the way that we lived last week or, or last year makes us somehow damaged goods and that until we start living right we're not really the kind of material that God is looking for and some of us actually believe that until we choose the correct way to live we aren't choosable that until we clean up the mess that Jesus won't have anything to do with us but the opposite is true he loves you just like you are with all of your problems with with all of your issues, with every wart you have in your life, he still loves you. Do you believe that today? Clap your hands to the Lord. The truth of the matter is that once we admit how lost we are and what a mess we are, you know what happened? Jesus shows up on the scene. Because Jesus, according to his word, Jesus, he prefers the lost ones over the found ones. Jesus prefers the losers over the winners. Jesus, in your Bible, he prefers the broken instead of the whole. Jesus really prefers the messy instead of the unmessy. Is that what Jesus taught himself in Luke chapter 5 and verse 31? He said this, healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. I came to tell you today, yes, I'm the pastor of this church, but I need Jesus. Every hour of every day, of every month, of every year, I need Jesus. And if that's you today, clap your hands to the Lord. It's time that we put into practice 1 John chapter number 1, verses 8 through 10. We claim to be without sin. We deceive who? who? We deceive ourselves if we claim we have no sin and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us with all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. Came to remind every one of us that, that you are not perfect. Take off the mask. You are not perfect. Take off the mask. Fact number two today. Is you do not have all the answers. I know your mama told you smart, but it's okay to admit that you need some help. It's okay to admit you, that you don't have all the answers. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I did a little study on that word all. You know what it means? All, not some, not part, all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all. I did a little study on that word all. You know what it means? All, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I came to remind every one of us that we have to lean on God. We got to lean on God's provisions. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He provides whatever I have need of. He's my Jehovah Shalom. If I'm going through a storm, he's going to give me peace. Whatever you need today, you can lean on Jesus. Whatever you have need today, he can provide and he can make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Don't look down. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Come on, somebody, clap your hands to the Lord today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is a God who provides. When life seems to be coming unraveled, you need to get some help. But don't forget that God uses people. 
Help can come in various forms for many of us. It can conform, come in the forms of family and friends. It, it can come in the form of elders. It can come in the form of counselors or even preachers. But your help should always be based on God's word. They give you advice and it's not backed up in here. You might want to second guess what advice they are giving you. So t- today, take off. The, the, I have it all figured out, mask, and realize that you do not have all the answers. But here's the encouraging thing for everyone in this building today. You know the one who does have it all figured out. The answer to every question you have in your life, his name is Jesus. The answer to every problem you have in your family, his name is Jesus. And you know him today. And he's for you. And he's not against you. If you believe that, say amen. Fact number three today is you aren't like anyone else. God created you just like you were supposed to be created. We want to wear a mask to fit in, so we have this idea about what a Christian is supposed to look like, and we put on this Christian mask. What motivated What motivated Ananias and Sapphira to come up with a scheme that they came up with in Acts? We need to flip back to one chapter before in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 36 and 37. It says, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, he sold a field and he owned and he brought the money and he put it at the apostles' feet. I call this the Barnabas effect. Because Barnabas had just sold some land and he gave all the money from the land that he sold to the church. They must have been in a capital campaign called the movement. I'm not sure. Old old Barnabas, he was bought in. They saw how much praise and attention that Barnabas was receiving and they wanted what he was getting. So they invented the scheme that Ananias and Sapphira, they wanted to look like this fella called Barnabas. The problem was they were not Barnabas. And no matter how hard they tried, they were never going to be Barnabas. They just needed to do what they could do. There comes a real danger in imitating someone's actions when you haven't imitated Jesus' heart. You get counterfeit Christianity. Jesus had plenty to say about those who were acting. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is preaching the Sermon on the Mount that day and he gives a warning to those who are just going through the motions trying to be like everyone else and he calls them this word. He says, you hypocrites. The word hypocrite is used 17 times in the New Testament and all 17 times in the New Testament it's used by Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 2. Jesus warns against giving just to be seen by everyone. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5, Jesus warns about praying just to be seen by everybody. And also in verse 16, Jesus warns about fasting for the attention of anyone else. He said when you pray, pray in secret. When you give, give in secret. When you fast, don't let anyone know what you're doing. Jesus makes it very plain that those who just go through the motions of being holy just to be recognized by men have already received their reward in full in this earth. And hypocrisy is to assume the appearance of being religious without actually surrendering wholly to the will of God. We are all in this church, in every church in America, we are all at different spiritual levels. Some are more mature than others. And if you are not as far along in your faith as someone else, listen to me today. It's okay. It's okay. I don't care where you're at on this journey. I care about the direction you're headed. And if you're headed toward Jesus, I want you to know that I'm behind you and this church is behind you. And you keep saying yes to Jesus and yes to his spirit and yes to his word. Jenna Franklin, I hope you don't mind me mentioning your name. She's been coming for several months now. 
She and Johnny, we just love them like they are. They're fixed to get married in a couple of months. But listen to me, today after service, she's getting baptized in Jesus' name. Today we rejoice over Jenna saying yes to the next right step, and that's baptism. That's what it's all about today. Can somebody say amen? To those who are more spiritually mature, listen to me very carefully in this church. As long as I'm pastor, we will give grace to those who may not be as far along as we are. Grace always wins. Fact number four today. I'm not telling you how many I have. Fact number four today. You are an unfinished product. Who, me? Everybody point at themselves. Say, yes, me. Every one of us are an unfinished product. God's not finished making me and he's not finished making you into the person that he wants you to be. We were to conduct interviews today with everyone present. and I would ask this question, are you satisfied with where you are today in regards to your spiritual growth? If I ask almost everyone in this building, around 400 people today, I have a sneaking suspicion that the massive majority, if not unanimous, would be this. No, sir, pastor, I am not satisfied with my spiritual growth because there's deeper depths that I can go. There's higher heights that I can go. There's another level that I can attain. You know what? That's okay. If you're not where you want to be in Christ today, that's okay. Because becoming Christ-like is a never-ending journey until that trumpet blows or I take my last breath. So today, I'm encouraging every one of us to take off your mask that you're wearing. Yes, I want you to show us how far you've come, but show us that you still want to grow in the grace and the admonition of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible has much to say about being unfinished. Philippians 1 and verse 6 says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion unto the day of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. That hasn't happened yet. He's still working on me to make me into what he wants me to be. Come on, somebody. I like standing over here better. The light's not so bright. It's not so hot. Another scripture, Philippians. Philippians chapter number 3 and verse number 12 says this, Now that I have not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to hold, to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Listen, if you'll say yes to him and take hold of him, he'll take hold of you too. He'll mold you. He'll make you. He'll keep putting stuff in you that needs to be in there. He'll keep taking stuff out of you that don't need to be there. He's still working on every one of us. No matter how much we've grown, we still need to grow more. And no matter how unspiritual we are, as long as we want to grow, Jesus will show up in, the, in our life of even the messiest of all disciples. I close with this story today. I was reading in an excerpt from this book called Messy Spirituality. Every month, uh, this youth group basically would, at this church, they would visit a, a nursing home. And most probably, like many of us, they didn't really enjoy going to the nursing home. Most of you today, if I just give you a picture, you can smell the nursing home. They would go there and hold church for the residents and Daryl was a reluctant youth group volunteer. He did not like the nursing homes and he avoided the monthly services until one day basically a flu epidemic 
depleted the youth group and Daryl agreed to help with the next month's service as long as he did not have to participate in the program they were doing that day at the nursing home. During the service, as you can imagine, Daryl hated the nursing home. He felt awkward. He felt out of place. And he leaned against the back wall while the service was going on. And just as the service finished and Daryl was thinking about how to exit very quickly, someone grabbed his hand. Daryl was startled and he, and he looked down and he saw a very old, frail, and obviously lonely man in a wheelchair. What could Daryl do but, but hold the man's hand? The man's mouth had hung open and his face held no expression and Daryl doubted whether this man could really hear anything or even see anything. And as everyone was about to leave, Daryl realized that he didn't want to leave the old man. Caught somewhat off guard by his feelings, Daryl leaned over and he whispered these words, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I have to leave, but I'll be back, I promise. Without warning that day, the man squeezed Daryl's hands, his hand, and then he let it go. Daryl's eyes filled with tears, he grabbed his stuff and he started to leave, and inexplicably, inexplicably, be inexplicably, I can't get that out. He heard himself say to the old man this, he said, I love you. Daryl thought, where in the world did that come from? I don't even like the nursing home. I didn't even want to be here. Daryl returned the next month and the month after, and each time it was the same. Daryl would stand in the back. Oliver would grab his hand. Daryl would say he had to leave, and Oliver would squeeze his hand, and Daryl would say softly, I love you, Mr. Leak. As the months went on, Daryl would find himself actually looking forward to visiting his aged friend. On Daryl's sixth visit to the nursing home, the service started, but Oliver still hadn't been wheeled out to the service that day. And halfway into the service, Daryl became alarmed. So he went to the head nurse and he, he got her attention. He said, Um, I don't see Mr. Leek here today. Is he okay? The nurse asked Daryl to follow her. And there he was that day. Oliver was laying in his bed. His eyes were closed. His breathing was uneven. It was very labored. And Daryl, in that particular stage in his life, had never seen anyone that was dying. But he knew that his friend Oliver was near death. So slowly he walked to the side of the bed, and what did he do? He grabbed Oliver's hands. When Oliver didn't respond, as you could imagine, tears filled Daryl's eyes because Daryl realized that he might never see Oliver again. He had so much wanted to say. He had so much that he wanted to say, but the words wouldn't come out. He stayed with Oliver for about an hour, and then the youth director gently interrupted to say they were about to leave, and as you can imagine, Daryl stood and he squeezed. Mr. Leek's hand for the last time. He said, I'm sorry, Oliver. I have to go. But I want you to know that I love you. As he clasped his hand, he felt a squeeze. Mr. Leek responded. He had squeezed Daryl's hand. And as you can imagine, the tears were unstoppable and Daryl stumbled to the, toward the door. He was trying to gain his composure. When he got to the door, a young woman was standing at the door. She said, I've been waiting to see you. She 
He said, I'm Oliver's granddaughter. I'm not sure if you know this, but he's dying. She said, I wanted to meet you. When the doctor said he was dying, she said, I came immediately. We have always been very close. And they said that he couldn't talk, but he's been talking to me. So last night he woke up and his eyes were bright and alert. He looked straight into my eyes. And he said this. He said, please say goodbye to Jesus for me. And he laid back down and he, and he closed his eyes and she said, I whispered to Grandpa. She said, I don't need to say goodbye to Jesus. You're going to be with him soon and you can tell him hello. Grandpa struggled to open his eyes again. This time his face lit up with a smile. He said, I know. But Jesus comes to see me every month and he might not know that I'm gone she said he closed his eyes and he hasn't spoken since she said I told the nurse what he had said and the nurse told me about you Daryl about you coming every month and every month standing there and holding grandpa's hands she said, I came today because I wanted to thank you. I wanted to thank you for me, but I wanted to thank you for him as well. And she said this, I never thought of Jesus as being chubby and bald like you. But I imagine that Jesus is very glad to have you be mistaken for him because I know that Grandpa was, and I came to say thank you. Oliver Lee died peaceably the next morning. And let me say this, if a reluctant follower like Daryl can be mistaken for Jesus, maybe you can and maybe I can too. If God can use Daryl, who didn't even want to be at the nursing home, he can use me and he can use you. Closing today, studying this week, the very first question in the Old Testament that was asked by God to Adam and to us as mankind was this right here. He said, where are you? The very first question in the New Testament is where is this child born king of the Jews? In other words, the first question in the New Testament is where is Jesus? The first question asked by Jesus was this, what do you seek? So I came to ask us these three questions today. The first one is where are you? This requires me and it requires you to come out of our hiding. It requires us to take off the mask that I used to hide my true self. It causes me to be real and not live in hypocrisy behind a mask. I came to tell us today, take off your mask. The next question is, where is Jesus? This requires me to remove my eyes from the distractions of life. And there are so many distractions. This is number one right here to focus on God who loves me. He causes me to see how far I really am from Him. And I may be far from Him today, but He is never far from me. He is as close as the mention of His name. The questions in closing today, where are you? Where is Jesus? And last but not least, what do you seek? This requires all of us on this last Sunday of July to evaluate our priorities. It is a true examining of oneself. What am I pursuing in this scene called life? Could we stand together today? In order for one to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, one must honestly answer these three questions. 
what am I preaching for today? I'm preaching for us. Let us not be afraid to be real with God. Let us not be afraid to be real with ourselves and real with others. I want to ask you this afternoon again, where are you? Who are you? Who has God created you to be? I ask us all today, will we decide to take off the mask and come today with our problems, with our issues, with our circumstances? Could we all go home by way of the altar today and say, Jesus, I need you to help me. God, you know what I'm facing. It could be a bad doctor's report. It could be financial issues. It could be relational issues. I wonder if someone would come forward today and say, Jesus, I'm going to take off the mask today. I'm going to be real. No, I don't have it all together. No, I'm not perfect. But God, I'm going to keep coming to you. I'm going to keep coming to the altar. I'm going to keep saying yes to you each and every day. As they sing, could we make it 100% today? Could we just step out of our aisles and step out of our seats and come to this front today and say, God, I surrender to you. I surrender to your will for my life. God, I'm not going to do it my way anymore. Come on right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to seek Jesus. We need to seek him. We need to seek his face. Hallelujah. God is wanting someone to make the next step today of repentance. God is wanting someone to make the next right step of baptism in Jesus' name. God is wanting to fill someone with the baptism of the Holy Ghost.
arms I'm letting go This selfish pride This hidden sin My brokenness Attracts you You take my tears I take your hair I breathe your name And I raise my your attention. What a great day of someone taking the next right step in baptism. Can we clap our hands and praise the Lord for what God has done in Jenna's life? Amen. I want to say publicly thank you to those that have been involved in life recovery. Sister Summer, Sister Mindy, Sister Jennifer, and all the ladies that have participated with them. This is a product of life recovery right here, of ladies loving her from the very beginning until this day. And Jenna, we're not finished loving you. This is just the beginning. The Bible says you will be a new creature in Christ Jesus. And we rejoice over that. Amen. Could we pray for her right now? Father, we thank you for what you have done. But God, we thank you in advance for what you are going to continue to do. God, I pray you would order her steps. I pray blessings upon her and her family. God, I pray, oh Lord, you would use her to impact many Jennas around Northeast Mississippi, that they too can know that you love them unconditionally and you are for them and not against them. Keep your hand upon her. Use her as a disciple maker, a soul winner, a witness, God. Pray you would touch her complete family. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, and everyone say amen. amen. 
Jenna, and obedience to the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and according to the Acts of the Apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you glory. I say yes to you, Jesus. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your way, God. I'm yours. I surrender. I surrender. My whole life. That's a Holy Ghost dinner. That's a Holy Ghost song. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands? We have one more getting ready. David Mash. Sister Sherry Felt's son, and if you would like to be baptized today, we have plenty robes, plenty towels. Today could be your day as well. Help him down in here, Brother Dale. Thank the Lord for this good man right here. God led him to Tupelo, Mississippi to be with his mother during this season. He came to prayer Friday and afterwards we had a small Bible study and I shared with him about baptism, the importance of it, and he said he wanted to be baptized Sunday and so today here he is. Another one just making the next right choice of taking on the name of Jesus Christ. David, we're so proud of you. No life hasn't been perfect, and as I preach today, none of us are perfect, none of us have it all together, but Jesus specializes in people that have broken lives. And I pray that this man would be used greatly. Father, right now, stretch your hands toward him. I want you to use this man, I want you to use his story, I want you to use his life to encourage others. God, I pray that you would order his steps, and I pray you would give him the desires of his heart Thank you for a praying mother. Thank you for the tears that have come up as a memorial before you. And he's here today because of a mother that prayed. And God, I pray, Lord, that his latter years would be greater than his former years. And we'll give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. David, in accordance to the word of God and obedience to the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Just relax. Hallelujah! We love you, Jesus! Thank you for another one! Thank you, Jesus, for another one taking on your name! Fill me with your spirit! For I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creature. Yes, behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I'm yours, God. I'm yours, God. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands and rejoice? Amen, amen, amen. I'm so proud of you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you ready to take off the mask? Are you ready to be what God's called you to be? God wants to use you as Daryl to affect the Oliver. God wants to use you as an imperfect human being to be the hands and feet of Christ. You don't have to have it all together to be used by God and to be used in this church. So we encourage you, say yes, get connected. We thank you so much for joining us today. How many of you enjoyed being in the house of the Lord on this rainy Sunday afternoon? Amen, amen, amen. Certainly we love you. Don't forget prayer tomorrow night at 6. Everybody say 6. It'll be in the sanctuary here. And then Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we will have worship in here, and I'll be preaching. And this month we're preaching on prayer and fasting. And so I'll find out how many of you want to pray and fast. You'll be here Tuesday night. And then next Sunday is Friends Day. You don't want to forget that. Brother Wayne Huntley, if you've never heard Brother Wayne Huntley, you will be blessed. Amen. It's going to be a great day. He's been a voice in my life. He's one reason I'm pastoring this church because of his friendship with Bishop Hill. Got us connected, and that's why I'm here today is because of Brother Wayne Huntley, one of the reasons. And so I'm excited for him to preach the very first time since I've been pastor. Greet one another. Love on one another. The restrooms are to our left and to our right if you need those. Don't forget to get a calendar before you leave. And then we'll see you either tomorrow night, Tuesday night, or see you next Sunday at 3 o'clock. Don't forget that. Sunday life classes at 3 and then worship at 4. May God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.